Thank you for joining us today for our class titled Discharge Instructions After Knee Replacement Surgery. You will be discharged with an order for home health. Please call your surgeon's office if you have not heard from home health within 72 hours of being home from the hospital. Home health consists of a nurse and a physical therapist. They will come to your house for visits until you meet your surgeon's goals or until you are no longer homebound. The home health therapist will see you two to three times each week, and the home health nurse will see you one to two times each week for a total of three visits. While we always want to maintain a positive mindset, recovery is a little bit harder than you think. But the good news is that your recovery instructions are simple. The five things that we want you to focus on during this time are rest, exercise, ice, elevation, and repeat. It is your full-time job to follow these instructions for an ideal recovery. You will have time later to return to regular exercises and activities, but for now, these are the best. Please know that it is normal for your psychological and emotional energy to be affected by medications, pain, sleep deprivation, and decreased appetite. As discussed in the pre-op class, anxiety and fear can create more pain, while calm and movement, including therapy and walking, can create comfort and control. Your brain's awareness of pain changes based on emotions, memories, beliefs, and environment, and your brain's sensitivity to pain changes after surgery. And remember that this is normal. Changing positions in bed or in the chair and getting up to walk and move around a little bit each hour will reduce your discomfort over time. We're going to cover a few great ways that we recommend to manage your comfort. The first thing we'll discuss is Tylenol and cold therapy. Unless contraindicated, we do recommend that you take Tylenol or acetaminophen, two tablets, three times a day for the first two weeks that you're home from the hospital. Please do not take more than 4,000 milligrams of Tylenol or acetaminophen in a 24-hour period. An anti-inflammatory is another good option, but please only take the prescribed anti-inflammatory medication so your healing rate can be improved. The only anti-inflammatory that we will prescribe after surgery is Celebrex or Mobic. We do not recommend ibuprofen, Aleve, and other types of anti-inflammatories. Cold therapy is one of the most important tools for pain relief after surgery. We would like for you to use cold therapy for at least 20 minutes every hour while awake during the first week. Do not use your ice pack when you're up and walking because this could create a tripping hazard. Elevation is another great way to alleviate some discomfort. When you elevate properly, your foot should be above the level of your heart for at least 30 minutes three times each day. Remember that swelling is normal after surgery and is very noticeable for six to eight weeks. Do not sit in a chair for more than 45 minutes at a time with your feet on the floor. If you will be sitting for a while, please prop your foot up. If you are lying down, place pillows under your feet, not your knee. Remember that it's important to keep your knee straight after a knee replacement. You may have some questions about pain relief. What if you've tried other options for pain control but still need more pain relief? In this case, you will have a prescription medication available. Another great thing to do for comfort is to change your body position frequently. You can also try relaxation methods such as deep breathing and meditation, listening to relaxing music or watching a movie, aromatherapy, or doing a favorite activity such as reading or playing games. If you've tried all of these options and you still need more pain relief, you have a prescription medication available. Sometimes a more powerful medication is necessary during your healing time. Opioids can help to control the breakthrough pain that isn't kept under good control by the other methods. Remember that you will not be pain-free, but we do want your pain to be tolerable so that you're able to get through your exercises. Opioid medications are commonly prescribed pain relievers. Most insurance plans will cover them but they do have restrictions. For example, most insurance companies will only allow a seven-day supply. Please don't wait until you're out of pain medication to call and ask for a refill. Try to do this ahead of time. There are some concerns with using opioid pain medications. They do have a high potential for misuse and dependency. 
One of every 15 patients who takes opioids after surgery becomes addicted to this medication. They can also have many negative side effects, including severe constipation, sleepiness, and dizziness. These types of medications also slow and shorten your breathing, which means less oxygen is distributed throughout your body. With all of these concerns surrounding opioid pain medications, why do we prescribe them? When opioid medications are taken as recommended, they can be a powerful tool for comfort after joint replacement surgery. Remember, discomfort is normal and expected after any major surgery. Please take your pain medications as prescribed and as needed. We expect that you will need less opioid medication each week after surgery. Most patients generally use opioids for two to three weeks following their surgery. We also recommend that you increase the time between medication as your recovery progresses, such as taking the medication three times a day rather than four, or every eight hours instead of every six. If you have leftover opioid medication, please ask your pharmacist or local police station about medication take-back days. If you live in the state of Missouri, the National Council of Alcohol and Drug Rehab will send you a drug deactivation bag to dispose of unused opioids. You can visit the website listed on the screen for additional information. Another option is to mix any unused medication with an unpalatable substance such as dirt, cat litter, or used coffee grounds. You can place them in a container, such as a sealed plastic bag, and throw that container in your household trash. Next, scratch out all personal information on the prescription label of your empty pill bottle and throw it in the trash. Constipation is a big concern while using opioid pain medication. This, with the lack of activity after surgery, contributes to constipation. Some suggestions to relieve constipation include increasing time and privacy for toileting, going to the restroom when you feel the urge, don't hold it, drink at least eight glasses of water every day unless your fluids are restricted, stay away from bulk laxatives such as Metamucil and Psyllium, do not eat foods with a lot of fat, and do not eat foods with a lot of sugar. Your daily goal for fiber is 25 to 30 grams while you're using opioid pain medication. Some examples of foods that are high in fiber include black beans, all-brand cereal, peas, oatmeal, bananas, and whole wheat bread. Medications to take to prevent constipation while using opioid medications include stimulant laxatives such as Senna, Dolcolox tablets, Milk of Magnesia, and Colace. If diarrhea develops while you're taking these medications, you can take them once a day. Miralax can be used at bedtime. Again, if diarrhea develops, use every other day rather than every day. If the above interventions do not work, then use an over-the-counter rectal intervention in the following order. Number one, a glycerin suppository, and number two, an enema. When you get home and you're thinking about activity, please remember to use your walker when you're moving around. You are able to bear weight as tolerated unless you've been directed otherwise by your surgeon. Please continue your exercises as well as any precautions as instructed by your hospital therapist. Do the exercises every day as instructed. You may return to driving after you stop taking opioid pain medication and once you feel comfortable driving. This is generally around three weeks after surgery. Fall prevention at discharge is very important. Please follow the fall precautions. One of every four patients will fall when they leave the hospital. Some things to consider in reducing your risk of fall are to make sure that your pal can stay with you for the first few days that you're home. Use your walker to move around. Do not go without your walker, even for short distances in your home. Remember to rise slowly from sitting and make sure that you have your balance before you start walking with your walker. Also, Remember to make sure the pathways in your home are well lit, clear of clutter and tripping hazards, and wide enough for the walker. Make plans ahead of time for pets and keep pets away from your feet. Regarding wound care, you will have a silver dressing. This dressing stays in place for six to eight days after surgery. At that time, the home health nurse will remove the dressing. You are able to shower after home health has given you approval with the silver dressing in place because it is water resistant. Wrap the dressing area with plastic wrap, such as press and seal or saran wrap, before you shower. Remove the plastic wrap after your shower. Do not let water pour directly on the bandage. 
Also, please do not shower if you have any drainage from the wound. Home Health will remove the silver dressing and replace it with a gauze dressing. Wait 24 hours to ensure there is no drainage before you shower. Remember, do not shower if you have any drainage from your wound. You may remove the gauze dressing before your shower, allow water to run over the incision, and then pat the area dry with a clean towel and apply a new gauze dressing. Do not scrub the incision area. No tub baths until you've been approved by your surgeon to do so. And the staples used to close the incision will be removed by the home health nurse 12 to 15 days after your surgery. To prevent infection, for the first four weeks after your surgery, it is very important to keep your incision area clean and dry. Hand hygiene should be a priority. Wash your hands frequently, especially pre and post dressing change. Please do not allow pets to lick or be near the wound when it's uncovered. Please make sure your clothing is clean and change your bed linens and blankets frequently. Limit alcohol and smoking as this prevents healing and follow the anti-inflammatory diet to maximize your recovery. Do not touch your dressing or remove the dressing unless instructed. For blood clot prevention after surgery, the doctor has ordered aspirin, 81 milligrams, twice daily for six weeks. If you're unable to take aspirin or if you're on a prescription blood thinning medication, please follow the directions on your discharge orders. Regarding your diet, it is very important to follow the high protein anti-inflammatory diet for four weeks. This diet will help to expedite the healing process. Limit alcohol consumption while you're taking pain medication and increase fluid consumption, especially water, while limiting coffee and caffeine drinks for the first couple of weeks after surgery. This will help to prevent dehydration. Some helpful hints to think about. Listen to the professionals. Resist the temptation to listen to your friends or family members instead of listening to the medical professionals on your care team. Do not compare yourself to people who say they did not take pain medications and were back to normal by two weeks after surgery. This is a highly unlikely story. Everyone's progress is going to be different along the way. Please do not compare this surgery with your own previous surgery. No one remembers the first few weeks at home, and this is generally due to anesthesia, pain medications, morphine, and sleep deprivation. Also, it is normal for the first several weeks after surgery to have swelling, redness, warmth or heat in your knee, pain, stiffness, bruising, and even a low-grade temperature. If you have concerns about any of these, please discuss them with the home care staff because they see patients every day who are in your same situation. You should call the surgeon's office if any of these symptoms arise. Excessive bleeding or redness at the surgical site, a fever over 101.5, any calf pain, pain that is not relieved by medication, ice, and elevation, increasing pain or tenderness in the joint, ankle swelling that does not improve overnight, or continued constipation that is not relieved by the recommended over-the-counter medications. If you were to have shortness of breath or chest pain, we would recommend that you call 911. Finally, call your surgeon to schedule your follow-up appointment right away. Keeping these things in mind, remember that we want your recovery to be a success. See your goals, understand the obstacle, create a positive mental picture, Clear your mind from any doubt, embrace the challenge, stay on track, and show us that you can do it. Thank you for your attention during discharge instructions after total knee replacement surgery.